Welcome again. We'll start with NCERT class eight, the seventh chapter that talks about understanding the idea of marginalization. Now, when we talk about marginalization, first understand what do we mean by the term marginalized. So, if you have numerous students playing along and you have one student who is not being mixed up with the group, we say that that student becomes marginalized. So, in simple terms, we can say the person or the group of persons who are not in the center of the things and have been put onto the side or the fringes are marginalized. <laughs> so with a very simple example we can say let's say I have five markers here and I have a pen, pen here so what becomes? What happens is this pen basically is marginalized in the group of these markers because there is uh, the others which are not similar to the pen and you do not have a kind of common sharings that could be seen between the groups. So that happens or that is the result of marginalization. Now why marginalization occurs is important. It could be due to difference in the language. So a person from South India is moving to North India is not able to mix up with the normal language Hindi that the people speak there, uh, that most of the people speak there. That person might become marginalized for example. Then marginalization that could be due to religion so minority groups of religion can be marginalized for times it can be due to differences in the customs and the social status now once a person or a group of person is marginalized what happens few of the things that become important to understand and to uh, and creates a need for their protection are first of all there is the state of powerlessness that develops so since there are very few of that group they become powerless they feel that they are disadvantaged because of some things or some reasons and more or less they are uh, excluded from the mainstream so sometimes people feel that they are not the part of the mainstream and they cannot adjust to the mainstream as a result you have exclusion that takes place there is also a sense of difference that is created and sometimes it could be either due to prejudice or a stereotype that there develops hostility and fear among the marginalized group of people. So what the government or the constitution really does is, is to protect the rights of the marginalized and to create a scenario or a setting that they are able to mingle with the mainstream. So that's the basic idea that the government works around. Now what we will be doing in today's lecture is focusing in on two marginalized group. One is the Adivasis or what we call as tribals and the other is the Muslim community. Now first we will talk about the tribals or the Adivasis. The word Adivasi itself means original inhabitant of the land. That means these were the original people who occupied the forest and dwelled in the forest for long as a result they were basically I can say the king of the forest any forest produce they were well acquainted with they had the full control and the access over the forest produce and the resources and anyone in the empire or the king's state would have to look uh, look to or look forward to a tribal to gain knowledge or to gain any kind of forest resources. So originally these people were really really rich culturally, uh, they were well sound and they had a intense knowledge of the real phenomena that occurs in the forest area. Of the total population of India, 8% accounts for the tribal population and a very interesting phenomena about tribals is they are not homogeneous. That means across India we have variety of tribes that are seen, however none of them have common characteristics and there are nearly 500 different groups, tribal groups that could be seen. Odisha itself has more than 60 tribal groups that are present. So they were originally engaged in either forest activities or mining and industrial activities in Jharkhand and uh, Chhattisgarh. However, later on there was migration. They migrated to the tea states in Assam. There are more than 8 lakh uh, uh, workers or tribals that are seen there. During the process of migration, there were more than 5 lakh uh, migrants who vanished out during the 19th century. Many of the migrants even migrated to the plantations in other nations like Australia, Cambodia and so on. However, they have something of their own or the originality. Now this exists in the form of their own language which is not similar to the Hindi or the English or the common languages that we speak. They maintain their own language. 
when it comes to religion they are basically animist means they do not believe in the gods like as we do they believe in some kind of powers the supernatural powers the power of animals the power of nature the power of ancestors so they worship ancestors they worship villages they worship the natural spirits and some of the good examples are the jagannath cult of odisha and shakti and tantric traditions in bengal and assam so those are some of the examples many of the tribals were converted into christianity when you had lot of christian missionaries that entered india and later on as we see the modern tribals many of them have adopted christianity as their religion again there were numerous stereotypes that were attached to the tribals for example they believe in certain customs they are exotic primitive they are resistant to change and so on and so forth but these are really stereotypes only and Uh, again they had their own languages however the most common tribal language that is seen is santhali and santhali is one of the most popular tribal language with largest number of speakers that has been seen now what happened with the process of development with the process of development the forest were cleared you had mining projects that came up you had dam constructions that started and all these led away the original land from the tribals so what happened was now these tribals started to become marginalized they were they were forced to move away from their original piece of land and therefore they were asked to move to the cities when they moved to the cities they were engaged in low wages jobs and as a result they became marginalized further and it became a kind of vicious cycle that occurred initially they were the ones who were familiar with the major animal products the major medicinal plants and were really important in the past society but as the trend changed and things changed you had uh, the land that became uh, occupied for wildlife centuries national parks and these tribals were forced out of those areas so all these activities led to ma further marginalization of the tribes and you have for example the niyamgiri hills which is located in kalahandi in odisha now this is inhabited by the khon tribe however there was proposition for the aluminium plant to be set up many of the environmentalists worked around it, around against it but still it was in uh, flow so what happens with these kind of projects is the tribes further gets marginalized now there is one of the story in the ncert that talks about dadu and how the things have changed he explains his own story so he says initially we were the king of forest and we were really rich uh, with the modern in, uh, inventions coming in there were tractors that rolled across the forest and we had to sell our land at very low cost to the contractors and we were forced to move on to the cities with uh, very low wages and a kind of marginalized and low wage jobs we were threatened and beaten so those were the kind of stories that used that the original tribals used to tell to their children and grandchildren so this is how the things have changed for the tribals over the time the land has been acquired in northeast you have the land that has been militarized that is being used for the military purpose that is war zone so those are some of the areas so what happens is they ultimately get trapped into the cycle of poverty and deprivation as we talked about and malnutrition and low literacy are again the killers for them so all those are the things that the government need to look look forward for so government has given a category of scheduled tribes where the government has officially declared these uh, groups as tribal groups which are recognized by the government of india and uh, there are certain protections that have been given to them they have been given certain advantages in government jobs for promotions and so on so there is kind of reservation that could be seen but more or less they have been displaced from their land as a result they have lost their income they have lost their traditions and lost their customs so this was the idea for the adivasis or the tribal groups now coming on to the minority minority i can say if there are 20 students in a group of uh, in a class and there are two students from a separate community so these two student become the minority student that's the simplest way to explain it so community which is numerically less in number in relation to the remaining population is declared as a minority population now sometimes this size itself 
can lead to marginalization. So Muslims for 2011 census, if we talk about, account for nearly 14% of the total population and their size is really less than the uh, total size or the total population if we talk that is 100% that comes to be only 14% from that 100%. Now citizens have been given the right to approach the court if, we fe if they feel that any of their fundamental rights is violated. So constitution safeguards those rights. We have talked about the population group for Muslims. Now they are considered as marginalized because they have less access to the basic am amenities. There was a Rajendra Sachar committee that was established and this committee is really important because it explained the socio-economic and political or educational status of Muslims in India and it talked about the high drop rates and low school enrollment rates among the Muslim students. It also talked about the formation of ghettos and it said that uh, this community has been distinct due to some of the uh, distinct customs and the traditions that are being followed. Later on that there was seen that ghettoization has occurred and ghettoization means that this region, uh, there is a region that has been demarcated in the city let's say and that region is populated by a specific community. So there is a feeling of security that generates among the people there and they, are, they feel that they are safe to live in this region itself. However, as a result they become marginalized or they are moved to the fringes because of that process of ghettoization and we call this process as a kind of social marginalization that occurs. Now this, these various prejudice and stereotypes that exist have led to prejudice and hatredness which is again one of the major issues that we need to address in today's society. So what we require is various strategies, measures and safeguards to uh, address the issue of marginalization. Both of these groups that we have discussed and other groups that we know about have a long history of struggle and resistance. They have shown definitely resistance to change which is one of the major reasons and again there is this marginalization that that keeps them or that wants them to create their own distinct culture and do not lose their traditions and the customs with the mainstream. So what government or the constitution really wants is to safeguard their rights, to protect them and to have a way forward for them so that they can be well adopted or well mixed up with the mainstream. In the next class we will talk about <coughs> how different groups have confronted the issue of marginalization. So stay tuned for the lecture. After covering class 8, we will start with the class 9 political science. Have a very good day ahead.